Hey everybody, welcome to the Sky Lounge, here to review some Lakers action as we win 96-87 to against the Orlando Magic, and yes, Frank Vogel, Dwight Howard coming back, kind of a hostile environment, but looked kind of empty, more or less, but here's the thing, first game, you know, I have a five game road trip for the Lakers, start off, you get Avery Bradley back, awesome, but the not so awesome news, Kyle Kuzma, out uh, he re-aggravated his ankle Ill, uh, injury and not a great thing for Kyle Kuzma hopefully he uh, has a speedy recovery comes back to the team and Rajon Rondo was a game time decision and looks like he was out as well and coming in you're thinking all right um, Orlando Magic not a bad team I mean they did make the playoffs last season made a bit of a bit of a noise for like a game or two but kind of petered out and you're thinking, okay, cool, like this should be a very interesting game in the first quarter, but it was anything anything else but an interesting thing in the first quarter. Uh, how do you say this? When Orlando shoots below 19% from the fucking field in that first quarter, you're going to have a disastrous time just watching basketball, all right? Lakers led a 26-9 to at the end of the first quarter, and even the Lakers were shooting poor all game. For the Orlando Magic, that was just abnormally poor, which kind of will balance out to, you know, the means, relatively speaking, throughout the game. But the Lakers were just starting off poor. Uh, just kind of a consistent level of poor, right? And I like those people who, uh, I don't know, on those crazy-ass payment plans for Cricket Wireless. Whatever, man! I'm not here to judge what fucking wireless carrier you use here. But what I am judging is the effort from the uh, LA Lakers in that second quarter where I thought, all right, Jared Dudley making some shots, but Danny Green, uh, Danny Green just questionable shot choices and going, what, 0 for 3 from the three-pointer? And he, he shot worse, I mean, in, in the entirety of the game. But boy, oh boy, the second quarter just opened up space for the Orlando Magic, and they were catching up. They made some decent runs. But LeBron James responding with the fire fuego in his heart with the points. And a pretty impressive run from LeBron James himself. And 11 points in 5 minutes of the second quarter was immensely impressive. But you have to also realize that <clears throat> despite Orlando looking to have a chance, it all came off of LA mistakes. The LA Lakers were shooting themselves in the foot. Turnovers, bad shots, and... Despite all of that, I mean, the Orlando Magic were terrible. They were absolutely awful in this first half where Jonathan Isaac shot zero points from the field. Somehow ended up with 19 points in the second half, which credit to him, but my goodness. This game in the first half was dog shit. And typical, you know, villain in the Lakers when there's any sort of mediocrity or stagnancy in the offense or defense, you look at KCP, right? I'm berating KCP, and then all of a sudden, he goes back-to-back -back threes. And you're thinking, oh, shit, oh, well, all right, I'm eating my words there. But kind of the way KCP unfolds in the game, right? Anytime you see him, you're just, all right, you're cursing him like two, three possessions, and then down the line, two, three possessions, he's making these clutch threes or great passes, outlet passes, and you're just thinking, okay, cool. I'm... What am I complaining for? As long as LeBron James and AD does it, <laughs> we should be good to go. But with 4.4 seconds left. AD to LeBron. The connection misses out on the buzzer beater. And we have the half 51-38 to 38 in favor of the Lakers. Yeah, this game was really ugly from the get-go. And sure enough, the Orlando Magic tried to rectify the ugliness of the first half by coming out with Evan Fournier shooting back-to-back-to-back -to -back -to -back threes. Three! 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 What the fuck? Nine points on the goddamn board? Because we can't do shit right now on the offensive side? And it just continued this frustration with the Lakers where JaVale gets four fouls. You're looking into the depth of the squad and thinking, all right, man, we got to buckle down. We got to get everybody on the goddamn <clears throat> train. And I'm not going to lie to you, boys and girls. The Lakers were only leading 69-65 to at the end of the third quarter. And I wasn't panicked. For whatever reason, I'm watching this game and thinking, eh, 
Uh, the Lakers are probably still going to win by 10 points. Probably. And maybe that's an arrogant part on me, but I saw nothing in Orlando's game to suggest that anything was going to be close. And you would figure, okay, a, a close game, becoming a close game here in the fourth quarter, maybe the referees are a little bit eased up and not being inconsistent piles of shit, but uh, yeah, no, no. We can, we can only wish for rain in the desert, but shit like that doesn't happen. Right, except in Las Vegas, where weird shit happens in the desert. But here's the thing, boys and girls. You had a little bit of, uh, of a scuffle, where Dwight Howard is going in for a layup, misses, grabs a rebound, and it is just a tug of war for the ball underneath the basket. And <clears throat> the guys who got caught up in this is Dwight Howard, Michael Carter Williams. Who, yeah, that Michael Carter Williams, the guy with the Philadelphia 76ers a couple years back. Uh, you have a window, if I'm saying that name correctly, and Jonathan Isaac also involved in that kind of mess, and Jared Dudley getting a little antsy because some of the players out there in the Orlando Magic were being a little bit of a hothead, and a window just pushing and shoving Dwight for no reason felt obnoxious at best, but... You have the refs looking over this thing like a goddamn grad student for whatever fucking reason it needed to take that goddamn long. Jared Dudley and Owundu are ejected from the game, which I thought, all right, I love Jared Dudley. At this point, if you're telling me that Jared Dudley is going to get traded, you need to get the fuck out of here. Jared Dudley was that guy who stood up for his friends, his, his teammates, his brothers. In arms. I mean that that's that's what I saw out there. And you know the funny thing is we had a similar situation with last season, Brandon Ingram and CP3, but BI chose the wrong battle in front of LBJ, right? But this one, it felt right. It felt appropriate. I mean, Orlando Magic, very hostile environment, and then Jared Dudley steps up for Dwight Howard, who's been getting harangued and booed by this crowd, which knows nothing but failure. I mean, let's be real, Orlando. Like, thanks for the, what, 15th ring? Yeah, thanks for that one, but holy fuck. Just a historical nightmare if you're an Orlando Magic fan, just realizing how many fucking perennial all-stars you have you just whiffed on by just being a fucking terrible organization. But on this night, it felt like, okay, cool. Despite all of this crap, it looks like Orlando is making a good push. Mo Bamba, doing really well. I mean, he got a block on LeBron James, and I got to say, that was quite a block. Pretty beautiful-looking block there. And you come down in, you know, the final moments of this game, three minutes left. The Lakers are leading 88-83. to Even this point, I'm not panicking. I'm just not, okay? KCP dropping those beautiful threes. LeBron James with the fucking deep-ass threes. Going for it. And... The Jonathan Isaac insanity of the second half was is pretty incredible. This guy's second year, just insane block numbers. And then you got Mo Bamba coming off the bench with his insane block numbers. Just what a squad. What a squad of young guys. And unfortunately for them, this is where the differentiation comes in between the Lakers and the Magic. It's that veteran mentality. We've been there, done that. We're only down a couple of points in an ugly game where we can't get baskets and the other team is a young, upcoming, energized, you know, chip on their shoulder kind of workhorse mentality, guys. The Lakers know how to handle themselves. And sure enough, you got even LBJ and Danny Gray missing, you know, really clutch points, really clutch threes there, but... Wow, the Orlando Magic suck. Um, yeah, how do you how do you have like twenty seven seconds left on the clock and you let a game of keep away kill seven seconds off of the fucking precious clock? You need to foul the Lakers at. That was pretty incredible to watch from the Orlando Magic, where I thought, wow, head coaching is just kind of constipated in there, uh, despite the young potential stars that are. In Orlando, the, there's not much going to be happening. Um, in my opinion, I mean, if you can get, get a guy like David Fisdale, 
I think Orlando can compete. Something along those lines, helping those young guys move along, you need a Fizdale. But this head coach, I just thought, okay, cool, it's over. I mean, the, way you, the way you blew a challenge in the first four minutes of the game, I already knew this was over. Like, there's no discipline in this team, and talent alone can't win you games. And listen, when we go down the list for Orlando, the amount of points you know spread between these players was fairly even and very well done. And this speaks to the team effort that is or the Orlando Magic. Uh, Jonathan Isaac, 19 points, 8 rebounds, 1 steal, 2 block. All those 19 points coming in the second half, which is immensely impressive despite how awful he started offensively in the first half. And then you got guys like Evan Fournier, uh, 18 points, 2 rebounds, 5 assists. Great fucking performance from him. He was putting up shots, uh, significant shots in the third quarter to bring the Magic back real close uh, from a near 24-point deficit from the first half. And then you got Mo Bamba, 13 points, four uh, re- four rebounds, uh, one block. This kid looks pretty interesting. Uh, when you have Mo Bamba coming off the bench, giving you those good defensive looks and giving you great points off the bench, I mean, come on, man. Can't really complain about that. And Aaron Gordon, uh, who did play a bit of a factor, but not significant enough. 14 points, 14 rebounds, 4 assists, 1 steal, 1 block. Good player, but just cannot push them over to that edge. And this is the story of the Orlando Magic, in, in my eyes. Just, they can put together a half, but you can't put together a complete game. Which is unfortunate, but... That's what's going to separate you and what gets you to the playoffs and what doesn't. And we've seen this timeless and timeless uh, uh, iterations in, in the Orlando Magic. And we've seen it with the Lakers. That's why I'm saying it from experience. But for the Lakers, different kind of story this game. Awful from every aspect of the game, maybe except the defensive side. But we pull out with the win. Let's talk about this. LeBron James, 25 points, 11 rebounds, 10 assists. Three steals, a triple-double on a fairly difficult night for everybody, but he pulled us through. LeBron James. Those numbers are ridiculous. But AD, who had a pretty awful night in terms of points after the 50-point game, shooting from 30% from the field. AD gave us 16 points, 12 rebounds, 6 assists, 2 steals, and 2 blocks. You have to understand... I don't really watch college basketball, but I remember watching this documentary on uh, ESPN, the 30 for 30 with uh, Kentucky and and Mike Calipari. AD in the NCAA final didn't have to score points. He just went full beast mode on the defensive side. And when AD has an awful night, 30% from the field, but still gives you 16 points and all those rebounds and all those defensive looks, oh my God. You got to count your lucky stars that he is on your team delivering the goods. And we had some fantastic players alongside them just helping out. I mean, KCP deserves a massive shout. 15 points, 3 steals, uh, 57.1% from the threes. Made some really, really key threes down the line. Um, and, of course, he gets he gets a lot of hard time from the Lakers faithful. But we all know... When necessary, he is going to do what it needs to, especially behind the chemistry of this team. And when we say chemistry, we have to mention, again, Jared Dudley, 9 points, 2 rebounds, 75% from the 3. 3 out of 4 3-pointers made. This dude was lighting it up from the 3s, and before getting ejected out, I thought Jared Dudley was going to be the X-factor as to winning and blowing out the Magic, but... With him getting ejected, it felt more of a closer, grimier game. But this is the guy who pulled us through. This is the guy who I feel united the Lakers together to just say, all right, fuck this shit, man. We're not going to fucking lose (laughs) in a hostile environment where we've been bitched at, unfairly given chances by the refs. Who, I mean, let's be fair. The referees are terrible all around for all teams. And... They got behind the uh, team philosophy and just got through. And so for the Lakers, this, again, is an ugly start to the first game of the five-game road trip. But a win is a win is a win. And on Friday, we are headed to Miami. I mean, the Lakers are. I'm actually going to be headed to Dallas. So 
hopefully uh, the Lakers win when I am in Dallas and I could watch some highlights in Dallas and cheer for my Lakers and give you guys a review video in Dallas. So, boys and girls, I will see you next time on Friday or later in Dallas again. But follow me at the Sky Lounge and all the links in the description below. Like, comment, subscribe for more daily contents. No, fuck off.